don't know if that's something to be proud of, but I have the dubious distinction of being the last resident of Liberty Island, yes. Uh, walking around the island at night and looking up at the Statue of Liberty. It's quite an experience seeing all the different ways she changes. Some nights she's actually a little bit of blue as opposed to green. I had two sets of grandparents that came through Ellis Island. I wonder what they would think if they found that their great-grandson was going to be the steward of the Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island. Welcome to the Statue of Liberty. Think about going to a different country. You may not speak the language. And they show up. Everything that means the world to them is in this one, one or two bags that they're carrying and they're told to drop those bags and go upstairs to be processed. And they never even know if they're ever gonna see that picture of their parents or their children that they left behind. They're relying on their faith that everything's gonna be okay because this is the country that they wanna to come to. It's been reported that we've never lost a bag on Ellis Island. I guess the folks today could learn a thing or two about keeping tabs on bags. Everybody came from someplace in America, except the Native Americans. <laughs> and it's, it's important to keep that alive, I think. I don't know that our generation would be as gutsy as they were to come. My grandmother was 20, and she never went back to Italy. Okay. I don't know why, but I got emotional when I saw it for the first time I was crossing. I mean, I think it was just part of history, it being there, and it was just, it was an emotional moment. I mean, even me being born here, I guess I put myself in the, in the, in the emotion of all the people that came by boat, and the first thing they saw was this statue, in a sense, welcoming them to a new, a new world, to freedom. Right here at Ellis Island, this is where my family became American. My parents immigrated here from Hong Kong and China to be able to tell their story by using the site as, as a focus. I, I just love it. I mean, there's just no way around it. Our ancestors came over in 1914 from Lithuania. When we walked up the steps, it gave you the chills down your spine, kind of what they went through when they came on the boat and came up here. During our peak immigration period at Ellis Island, we would average between eight and 10,000 people a day. In our biggest visitation, we processed over 12,000 people. Today, uh, our visitation uh, during the summer is between 18,000 and 22,000 people a day. So we welcome quite a few more people. Of course, we don't process these people other than putting them through security. <laughs> October 29th, 2011, we had closed down to do some life safety renovations. Fortunately, when Sandy hit, none of those upgrades were damaged, but our entire infrastructure were all destroyed. While it was a very sad day for us, we quickly realized it was also an opportunity to make this a more sustainable park. It was also kind of moving in this devastation to see the statue standing there, the flag still flying, proud and defiant, and uh, no storm was going to bother her. 